after I posted my video on my right angle chain drive system, a commenter said he had seen something similar to that used in a sawmill. So after a little searching, I found out that there was a chain used for that purpose. It's called the side bolt roller chain, and it's mostly used for conveyors. So I'm not the inventor of it. Someone else had already come up with it. But what I used was just a regular chain, and I cut each link on one side so I could bend it around in a circle. And I'm using it on a vertical axis wind turbine that I'm building for some testing purposes. This wind turbine that I'm building is kind of a feasibility study to see if it warrants building something bigger. And this right angle chain drive is just one of several drive methods that I'm testing out on it. This is a 12 foot diameter vertical axis wind turbine, four foot high sides on it. And it weighs about 500 pounds. Looks like a lot of energy in there, doesn't it? We'll take a little wind speed reading now see what's happening with the wind. This thing starts turning at about one and a half miles per hour. Right now it's probably averaging two and a half to three miles per hour and using the scientific calculations the amount of power in the air that's hitting that turbine is right around six watts. So it's taken about six watts just to turn that. And using the wind turbine calculations you can find online, you just punch in the numbers of the wind speed and the size of your turbine, and it'll calculate the typical efficiencies in. And there's probably about one watt of usable power, what you see right now. When the wind speed is around three miles per hour, two and a half, three miles per hour. So it can be kind of deceptive. There's a lot of torque on this turbine, but very little speed. And there's very little energy in the wind right now when it's at that low speed. I punched some numbers in on an online wind turbine calculator to get some numbers for this size turbine. You can see the available power in different wind speeds over here and it's pretty low. This is available power that's actually in the wind and we got turbine power, we got lots of losses for turbine power and we got additional losses if we're going to generate electric from the turbine power. And it's not till you get like around 10 miles per hour and higher where you start getting some numbers that's a little more usable. And that's why I'm testing out this size of turbine first before I consider building something bigger. Because something bigger is what you would really need in order to use these lower wind speeds and actually get some usable power all the time. You need something a lot bigger than a 12 foot diameter, 4 foot high. My homemade side bolt chain is probably a little tighter radius than what you'd see in a conveyor. But it does work like this with the smaller gear. And I just made this chain by cutting into the one side so I could put it around the circle. And I got it secured to this plywood circle that you see me cut in another video with some screws. And it does work. Let me release the brake on the wind turbine and get it going. And there she goes. And it's starting to take off now. Turn this a little bit. This is revamped from what I had before. I got a solid one inch shaft down here, strong. This is secured good to the plywood, pretty steady. Wind turbine is just picking up speed. Up 
speed. Probably the ideal thing would have multiple shafts coming off of here for turning stuff. I don't think you could get a tremendous amount of power off this one little shaft. But if you had multiple ones, you could have smaller devices turning at the same time or independently. But the way I revamp this, I do have a way I can disengage it too. I can just disengage it. I put a hinge right there. I don't know if I can push it down. I don't know if I can re-engage it with a turning like that. We'll find out. Yeah. It was a little rough, but it does re-engage. Of course, there's no load on this right now. If there was a load on that, probably cause a little problem. Then I would just shut the wind turbine off to re-engage it. And over here I have that compressor mounted that'll be turned by this wind turbine. I just got to connect that chain up. And what I decided to do is just uh, bolt a sprocket right to the compressor. It was the easiest thing to do because I couldn't find a sprocket that would fit that shaft. Turbine just starting to turn. Got the air compressor hooked up to the side bow transmission. Turning slow. It's about four or five below Fahrenheit. So I think that oil in that compressor is pretty thick. But it's turning it. It takes about a 15 mile an hour wind, I think, to turn it. Probably getting like maybe 12 mile per hour wind right now. It's cold out here. The wind chill is about 25 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. And you can see when that compressor is pressing down the chain bows. Unfortunately, the wind turbine just isn't powerful enough to turn that compressor, except slow. It needs to be like over a 15 mile an hour wind speed, and it's just turning it a little bit. But it is working. The side bow chain arrangement that I got is working. I know when it was going faster, it really started shaking the whole turbine. It's just kind of inching along right now. It's kind of slowing down. Coming to the stop. But I do have it all hooked up. It's just, I don't think this wind turbine, the way it is right now, it's got enough power really turn that air compressor less a real high wind speed but when the wind speed is real high and it was pumping it would really start shaking the whole wind turbine just start shaking a little from a different angle maybe my nose is freezing right now See, it's just slowly turning. It's almost stopping now. Well, now it's starting to pick up. Kind of speeds up and slows down with each, with each uh, piston compression of that uh, compressor. I'm trying to get a wind speed. That's not accurate, I don't think. I need a different wind speed meter. I get to get over here, I think, more. There you go, 
probably a little more accurate. 13, and then the pressures work in there. Just not quite enough to move it. You can see the chain loosen and tighten. It's cold out here. That compressor that's trying to turn with a wind turbine was off a setup someone had put together that I bought for like maybe $19. But everything was painted red. Somebody had painted everything red, so there was no labels or anything I could find any specifications on. Well, the compressor to me looked like it was kind of on the small side. That's why I thought maybe that wind turbine could turn it. And it probably could have if the wind speed would maintain over 15 miles an hour. But that's not real practical right here. We get wind speeds 15 miles per hour and a lot higher with wind storms. But to maintain it isn't that common. Something more around maybe 7 to 13 miles an hour is more common here. So something like that would probably work better here. And I did take that compressor and I hooked it back up to electric motor. And this time with a watt meter. To see what it was drawing. Well, it was drawing over a thousand watts. So I can see why the wind turbine can hardly turn it. There's just not enough power there. Well, I still have a lot to do with this wind turbine. I still have to make the wind diverter panels that was part of the original plan so I could focus more wind into the turbine. And I still have some powertrains I want to test out. So I'll keep updating as I go along. Depends on the weather. If it gets too cold around here, you can't really get much done. Right now, it's just too cold to really get anything done. But I'll keep you updated as I go along. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again.